2 Samuel chapter 22. And David spake unto the Lord the words of the song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of, the, of all his enemies, out of the hand of Saul. And this is Psalms 18, what we're going to read. And there's some variations, but pretty much the same. And he said, the Lord is my rock, great foundation. Jesus said, he that, built it, he that listens to my words is him that built his house upon a foundation, the rock. And my fortress, that's the first time fortress shows up. A lot of first time words are going to show up now. And my deliverer. So they would call this David's song of deliverance. God has delivered him from his enemies. And God, the God of my rock, it's David's rock. It's my rock. Personal. It's not their rock. It's not them rock. Jesus Christ is my salvation. He's my righteousness. Him will I trust. He is my shield. And when you run across this, which I have not, I'm processing doing the study right now. When you run, and I don't mean Goliath had a sword and a shield and a helmet. I'm not talking about that. But when you run through the Psalms and you run through the poetic shield and, and swords like this, and you run over to the Christian armor, you realize it says that the sword is the spirit. It says that the, the shield of faith. But when you run like this, it says, he is my shield. All right, you run over there, it says the shield of faith. And when you run a cross-reference here, not only is he the, the shield of faith, but he's also, God is my shield. So God is my faith. Scripture with scripture. And once I get that all built out, I will, would it be about another year or so, I'll build that into an outline. It's, it's interesting. And the horn of my salvation. What's the salvation found in the Christian armor? And that was my wife's words. What is, what's the one that speaks of the salvation? The helmet, I believe. Yeah. Where's a horn? Where do you find a horn? Is it not on your head? And horn in the Bible is strength. When it speaks about the horn, that's strength. That's power. My high tower. You can see out. You can see far away. My refuge, place to run to when there's trouble. When they say, when, you, when in a place of war, they say, you know, well, the enemies come, you got refugees. My Savior, there he is. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is Jesus Christ the Savior? Well, what did this verse start off? The God, the rock, my trust, my shield, my horn. My salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my Savior. God is the Savior. And when Jesus Christ will suffer and die, the tombs of the Old Testament saints arose. They're taken out of Abraham's bosom. Who took him out of Abraham's bosom? Who said to that dying thief, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise? Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is God, even to David in the Old Testament. He just doesn't know who Jesus Christ is yet. They had no idea what the cross is, but he's my Savior, and that's Jesus. Thou, saw, thou savest me from violence. That's, that's a particular, in the Holy Bible, you find the word violence. I will call on the Lord, that's Jehovah, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Your victory is not in horses, it's not in the military, it's in the Lord. David sent troops, but you guarantee, but... When you read the Psalms of David, not only did he go to battle with a sword and rocks, but he went to battle in prayer with the Lord and over his men. Man, he walked up to Goliath in the name of the Lord. Bling! I'll take that sword. David, I mean, listen, he sinned, yes. We're all sinners. We don't put adultery and murder at the top number one sins. All have sinned. And when you read the Psalms of David, you get the true character. And David fell. So do I. 
When the waves of death, that's the first time waves shows up. And you think of waves, the ocean wave, waves of death. Speaking about death as like drowning, as water overflowing you. When the waves of death come past me, almost like drowning. I've had that experience in my life. The floods of the ungodly. That's the first time that word shows up. Ungodly. I'm being overpowered by worldly, ungodly people. I felt that before. When you go into public ministry, it's, you're surrounded by wicked. And by the way, in verse 3, that savest, thou savest me, that, that's the first time savest shows up. I missed that one. Ungodly men. And you know what? The Bible says many will not go to... Go the way of Jesus Christ. Many will go the broad way. Few will go through the street gate. So that would back up what Jesus said. There are many out there who are against God. Bloods. Ungodly. We live in Daytona Beach, Florida with all the truth. Can you imagine how many people are not saved and would not do anything that God tells them to do. The sorrows of David. What's wrong with you? There's no hell. It's Shiloh. The sorrows of hell can pass me about. So what's David say about hell? He's got sorrow. What did Jesus say in Luke 16? He said, oh, if I could just have a little drop of water cool my tongue. There is sorrow in hell, but yet there's no tears. You would take your tears and cool your tongue. There's depression. There's anxiety in hell. The sorrows of hell can pass me about. David thought on times he was going to go to hell. He did not have the eternal security that a Christian has today. He's in the Old Testament. He realized when he's not doing the law and not doing the commandments, I'm in trouble if I were to die right now. And when you're in the Old Testament and you died, a lot of times you say, well, did that man go to heaven? That guy, did that man go to hell? Don't know. Had to be in the condition. Only David... And Solomon had been given that eternal security for Old Testament saints. Come past me about the snares of death, a trap. Prevented, prevented, that's the first time that word shows up. Prevented me. Prevented me from what? Doing to my fullest. I had to fear. Saul's chasing me. My enemies are chasing me. I'm going to die. And if I die, I may go to hell. When David's on the run all those years from Saul, man, he had fear. He had anxiety. In my distress, we all get distressed. I called upon the Lord, and that's the proper thing to do. If you're in trouble with your problems, go to the Lord. Had someone today. Let's take it to the Lord. And then when you saw the smile on his face, and you saw the cheer, he took it to the Lord, and the Lord took care of it. And cried to my God. Now, what's that cry there? Is that crying out, or is that tears? It could be either or. Sometimes cried in the Bible could be crying out, talking. Or it could be boo-hoo. I think both. And he, God, did Hear my voice out of this temple. Mr. Statue, can you hear me? Buddha, can you hear me? Maloni, Baloni, can you hear me? 144,000, can you hear me? Mary, can you hear me? No, they're dead. But God. And when you le read the life of Jesus Christ, God manifests in the flesh. Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, help! And he stopped whatever he was doing. Wherever he was going. What may I do for you? When he hears us. Sometimes he delays. Sometimes he doesn't answer us right away. But he hears us. Crying, Lord, and he did hear my voice out of his temple. That would be Old Testament. And for David, that's a that's a bunch of cloths. That's a bunch of hangings. And my cry did enter into his ears. We have a God that has ears that can hear. It's not 
you know, stone, metal, wood, whatever material, plastic. And Psalms would make fun of it. Oh, they got noses they can't smell, they got eyes they can't see, but my God has ears that can hear. And Jesus Christ, all the people he heard. Then the earth, okay, verses 8 to 16 are all second advent passages. David, speaking about the second. David is a prophet, 8 to 16, second advent. Ready? Here we go. Then the earth shook, an earthquake. You find these with Revelation. Revelation 6 for this one. And trembled. The foundations of heaven moved. He's on the horseback and he's coming back. The earth has no more natural light. The sun is out. The moon is blood. The stars say we're not shining. And mount up. Let's go. And he's coming in anger. Because watch. The heavens moved and shook because he was wroth. Revelation 19. He's not coming back as that little baby. He's not coming back as that land. He's coming back as a lion for roses. And I'm going to tear the bones of my enemies. But I'll spare Daniel. How's that? Daniel was a Jew. Those men that, that, that turned Daniel in. The, the goat nations. They were Gentiles. And when that lion comes back. Daniel just rest assured. Of, yeah, come on. Get on. Those people that accuse you, those people that curse you. Arr! Some people want the day of the Lord. This is the day of the Lord. You don't want this. I had to correct my grandma. She kept on saying, oh, day of the Lord. And take her to the book of Amos and say, you don't want that, grandma. We want the rapture. This is not, we're behind the Lord. On horseback at this point. Jesus is in front of us. There went up smoke out of his nostrils. Boy, you ever want a verse to pervert? It looks like smoking. And fire out of his mouth devoured coals were kindled by it. Revelation 19 is that sword coming out of his mouth. It's fire. You want to talk about a flamethrower? Out of the mouth of Jesus. The word of God. That's how powerful the word of God is. Burns his enemies up. He bowed the heavens also. And came down. Revelation 19.11. And darkness was under his feet. The universe. There is no light from the sun. There is no light from the moon. There are no stars. And they see this light coming. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's a lion. It is Jesus. And he's angry. Unless you're his people. And he had not received the mark. So. When we come back on horseback. According to what David prophesied. What are the horse's feet going to be on? The universe. You got to look down like, whoa. You're on whatever the universe is made of. I don't know what it's made of. And you won't have astronaut heads or helmets. Ready? It's only going to get more weirder and more great. You know, we know more about the second coming of Jesus Christ than we know about the first coming. That little baby to me. We don't know what happened that day. But watch. He rode upon a cherub. Can I get can I get you really weird there for a moment? Because Revelation 19 says it's a horse. None of those chariot no none of those cherubims has a face of a horse. Do you know where the cherub was? It was on that mercy seat. Do you know what Jesus is going to set up? For the Jews, he's going to set up the temple. And what's going to be in that temple? The mercy seat. Almost looks like the ark is coming back. With him on that seat and on a horse. I don't know. And did fly. He was seen upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness pavilions. That's pavilions is the first time that shows up. That's a tent or tabernacle. We're in that tent or tabernacle of Jesus Christ by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're not on the wrath side. We'll be egging them gone. And Joel says, you know, we're following them. Dark waters. And get that with Revelation, I mean, Genesis 1. Outer space is likened to waters. You send astronauts 
in Dallas. They got to have helmets with oxygen as a scuba diver needs. They're in space ships. How, why they all got nautical terms for airplanes or airships in outer space? Because it's water. And thick cloud of the skies. That's the first time sky shows up. And Amos says, Woe well, unto you to desire the day of the Lord. It is darkness and it is a day of clouds. Do you ever wonder what that verse? All right, there's no sun. The moon's turned off. The stars are out. How are you going to see the clouds? If it's completely dark, there's no light at all. How do you, when Jesus Christ comes to that light, what is that thing? What's that thing? Is that a sunrise coming over the clouds? Yeah. Hey, it looks like the sun's coming up. It's the wrong sun for them. It's the S-O-N. You ever see a beautiful sunrise? We see them down here all the time in Florida. There's always a cloudy, cloudy when the sun comes up. And sometimes when it comes up out of those clouds, it's beautiful. Not for the enemies of God. For the Jews in refuge, it will be beautiful. Through the brightness before him were coils of fire kindled. That's the flame. That's the word of God. That's that sword. It's bright. The Lord thundered from heaven. The Most High, capital H, uttered his voice. That's God. That's Jesus. He sent out his arrows and scattered them. Lightning, that's the first time lightning shows up in the Bible. You would think, you know, thunder, lightning, a rainstorm. It, there's lightning coming at the second advent. I know what I'd be. I'd be like, yeah, that's cool, Lord. It's great. No thunder? Sorry, Lord. And discomforted them. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes, these, these arrows, wherever they are, the lightning, the people, of, <laughs> and then comes the sword. And the channels, that's the first time that shows up, and that's a little pathway in water. It's the channels of the sea. That's where ship can go, where it's the deepest part of that river or wherever that body of water is. It's a safe place to be where your boat to go. If you go off the channel, you may hit the sandbar you may hit shallow water the chills of the sea disappear uh, appear excuse me and that's the universe when jesus christ comes back they're going to look to the sky and it's going to be a big wide opening with jesus coming and us behind him. nasa's going to freak out when they look in their telescopes they're going to see a man coming on the horse And the foundations of the world were discovered. And at the rebuking, that's the first time that word shows up. Rebuking of the Lord. Rebuking shows up. That's where, you know, you get charged. That word also shows up in Luke 4.41. Two places, rebuking. Of the Lord. At the blast of the breath of his nostrils. We read in, in Revelation, I mean, excuse me, Genesis chapter 2. By the breath of God, man became a living soul. By the breath of Jesus Christ, the Lion of God, the, the tribe of Judah, the breath of him, you're dead. You're dead. He sent from above. He took, he took me, rapture, and drew me out of many waters, rapture. David, a Jewish saint, goes up. He delivered me from my strong enemy. That in the future would be the Antichrist. For David, who was David's strong enemy? Saul. So Saul is a type of Antichrist. I told you that in scripture. And from them that hated me, they were too strong for me. And there were people, you know, in the realm of Jacob's trouble, there are going to be people too strong for the Jews. They're going to overpower the Jews. It's not for the elect's sake, Jesus said. He brought me forth also into a large place. Wait, 19. Did I do 19? 19. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. I mean, there's nothing I could have done. Trouble, problems, anxiety. 
but the Lord was my stay. He took care of me. So how do you describe heaven? He brought me forth into a large place without measurement. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. Now that is not a Christian. No Christian can, can say that. Because our righteousness is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The only way you can say my righteousness is if you're under the law and obeying the law, which can only be a Jew. So that tells you in the tribulation period, the law is coming back. According to the right, the clean, I got to move this way. The cleanness, that's the first time that word shows up. Of my hands. And he recompensed me. This is all tribulation period. For I have kept the way of the Lord. What's that? That's the law. I have not done wickedly. I have not wickedly departed from my God. There will be Jews that will do right. For all his judgments were before me. And as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. The law works. I was also upright before him by the law. And have kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness. According to my cleanness. In his eyesight. Again, that's no Christian. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With the upright man, thou shalt show thyself upright. Jesus quotes this. This is quoted elsewhere in, in the Bible. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. You will be to God what you were to God. If you were a deceiver, God says, if I sent the prophet to deceive him, I myself have sent that prophet. It's what you want. With the pure, thou shalt show thyself pure. With the forward, thou wilt show thyself unsavory. Now, unsavory, forward means wickedness. This absolute wickedness. And before I tell you what the definition, let's go to the only other places where it shows up, Job 6.6. 6. And it's kind of weird <laughs> that the only other place this word shows up is in Job 6.6. 6. Before I tell you what the definition is. In Job 6.6. 6, can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? That's the only two places that word shows up. Untasteworthy. It, it has no taste. It needs salt. And when you run the parallel verse in Psalms 18. It means forward. And it comes up with the forward. He will show himself forward. David in Psalms, the writer, records as unsavory. I think that word. Without taste. Job says salt. Did not Jesus mention judgment as salt? You are the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its flavor, is it good for anything? But in Psalms 18, that savory is, is forward. <clears throat> and read the two, well, we're not going to do it, but read the two together. Psalms 18 in this chapter 12. And the afflicted people, Jewish, that will say, Thine eyes are upon the haughty. That's the first time that word shows up. Prideful. God watches them. <laughs> and the only other place is Job 6.6. 6. Yeah, this one's loaded with and thou mayest bring them down. Everyone that is prideful and high. If you're saved, you're not saved. God will bring you down. For thou, God, art my lamp. O Lord, the Lord will lighten my darkness. That's John chapter 1. For by thee I have run through a truth. By my God have I leaped over a wall. That's us in Joel chapter 2 coming back. That's the, that is the testimony of the Christians. 
that are behind Jesus Christ. And read Joel 2. As for God, his way is perfect. Amen. The word of the Lord is tried. Psalms 12, 6. He is a buckler. That's the first time that shows up. And that's like a belt buckle. That's the whole belt buckle suspenders. It keeps your britches up. And it would be also as a defense. You know, men would advertise that, you know, big belt buckle. You've seen them. But in the military, the big belt buckle would be uh, uh, a cup also for protection. To all them that trust in him. So, what's this? God holds me up. And we live in a world today that people have their pants where they ought not to be. Just defying God. For who is God? Save the Lord. And who is a rock? Save our God. Jesus Christ is the rock. Paul says about that rock that fed him water in the wilderness. So if God is my rock, Paul says that rock in the wilderness is Jesus Christ. Well, guess who Jesus is? Scripture is scripture. And here he is again. Who is, the, who is that rock? Save our God. Notice this, save our God. What does Jesus mean? Jehovah saves. So when you say Jesus is not God, you have thrown this chapter completely out of the Bible. There's only one way to be saved by God, and that's Jesus Christ. Who is God? God is my strength and my power. He maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds. Now that's the first time. Hines with that plural. That's an animal. Deer-like. And if you ever see... It's amazing. I, I, I come across every once in a while these pictures. And you, you got this big rocky cliff. Somewhere. In, and you look in that picture. And here's this goat hanging. Just standing on this cliff. There's nothing there. And he's able to stand and climb that cliff. And this is what David's talking about. Nothing else can stand there but that goat can. And set as me upon my high places. Now that's a good high place. You see, there's a false. There's an anti. Satan has his high places. God has his high places. He teaches. That's the first time that word shows up. My hands to war. <clears throat> What's the, what about the rich who says, well, you know, we can't do military service. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. What do you do with verse 35 when David says, God taught me to war? What do you do with that verse? So that a bowl of steel, that's the first time that word shows up, is broken by my arrows. An arrow breaking of steel? Only God can do that. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. I thought it was a shield of faith. I thought God was my shield. It's all one. So not only do I have the shield of faith, but I have the shield that's God, and I, my shield is my salvation. It's all one that unit. It's all one. And thy gentleness, that's the first time that word shows up. Has made the great. Thou has enlarged my steps under me. So you got a footing. So that my feet did not slip. That's the first time that word shows up. Interesting. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them and turned not again until I have consumed them. Well, he didn't consume Saul. God did. I have consumed them and wounded them that they could not rise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet. Thou shalt not kill. Got a problem here. Contrary to scripture. You see, some doctrines of religions go contrary to the scriptures. That's why they don't open their Bible. If a Catholic were to open up his Bible and say, call no man your father. Whoa. That's interesting. 
Blessed are the paps that you suck, Jesus. Now, blessed him that does the work. Oh, God, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a queen of heaven in Jeremiah. You would find out the truth of your religion. That's why they don't want you in the Bible. That's why we go out with the Bible and teach the Bible and show the Bible. And when we teach people, Christians, to grow, we study the Word of God. Uh, for thou hast girded me with strength to battle. Thou shalt not. God's got a lot of battle. Because look at all the battle. Then that rose up against me, has thou subdued under me. God, you gave me the victory, not me. Thou hast also given me the necks of thy, my enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. And he told the Jew, I will curse them that curse you. They looked, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord. But he answered them not. Then did I beat them small. <laughs> then I beat them small. It's not like David's bragging there. Then I beat them up. Yeah, I got them. Then, I did, then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. Kind of funny. I did stamp. That's the first time that shows up in the only other place. Ezekiel 6.11. I thought stamp was something you put on an envelope. They were like, I stamped them. I stamped them as the mire. That's filth, gum, tar, refuse. That's the first time mire shows up in the street. Jeremiah is put into a dungeon where he sinks in the mire. The mire in the street, you realize that back then they had no cars. And they had a very weird pollution time back then with the animals. Not only did it make air pollution, but it also put pollution on the street. When the animal would do his job, right there in the street, and it would be pushed off to the side, and you would see dung, refuge, garbage. They would throw, you know, they throw their garbage right out in London. They throw their garbage right out the window. New York City. There. Huh? There. There's two. And they had people they hired that would come up and clean us the streets. There was a gate called the Dung Gate. Well, guess what went through that gate? The sewer. Then also is mired the street and did spread them abroad. Thou also hast delivered me from the strivings. That's the first time that word shows up. Of my people. Thou hast kept me to be head of the heathen. He's got heathen under him. They're not all Jews. A people which I knew not shall serve me. That's Jesus Christ. That's the Gentiles coming to Jesus Christ where the Jews won't. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. I'm a stranger. And I do what Jesus Christ tells me. Well, you know what I mean. As soon as they hear... They shall be obedient unto me. That's the strangers. That's people in the church age who are not Jews who get saved. Strangers shall fade. That's the first time that word shows up. Away. They shall be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth. And blessed be my rock. And exalt be the God of the rock of my salvation. That can only be Jesus Christ. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jehovah God. Jehovah Witnesses do not know who they are and what they are. Because Paul said that rock that gave him the water was Jesus Christ. The only rock of the Jews is Jesus Christ, the Savior. It is God that avenges me. And that bringeth down the people under me. And if that's David the type of Jesus Christ. That's the enemies of God. And that bringeth me forth from my enemies. Thou hast lifted me up on high above them. That rose up against me. 
Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. That's the first time that word shows up. Violent. We've done violence. Now that's violent. Look what God calls the enemies of God. Violent. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Therefore I will give thanks. That's the first time that word shows up. <laughs> the first thanks is to God. I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord. Among the heathen. The Gentiles. The ones that Peter and Jonah hated. Hey, I just want, hey, people, pay attention. I just want to say thank you, God. And I will sing praises unto thy name. That's kind of interesting. I will sing praises unto thy name. When you look at most of the hymns, they don't have the name of Jesus. Listen. No, I know this. He is a tower of salvation for his king. And showeth mercy to his anointed. That's Jesus. Christ means anointed. Unto David. He's also anointed. The king. The prince. And to his seed forevermore. And that's the sure mercy of David. And to Christ. Who comes from David. Well that's Psalm 18. That's David's praise to God. Even in times of trouble. 